Hello, this is Cassie Nowak, and first off, I just want to thank you for buying my teacher organization system, and I hope that it helps you to get organized this year and saves you time while doing it. This organization system is unique and awesome because it can truly be basically a one-click autofill with your data. Before we start, I do want to invite you to subscribe to my newsletter. I'm not going to send you a bunch of emails or or junk, but I am going to send you valuable information every once in a while. And also with each newsletter comes an additional file that you can add to this teacher organization system for free. So subscribe today. You can find the link in the description of this video if you click show more. Once you've downloaded the organization system from Teachers Pay Teachers, make sure that you take it out of your my downloads and save it into your documents or I saved mine on your desktop just so that it has a home and that you can find it easily. Once you have your classroom management folder in a, a good place on your computer, the first thing you need to do is open the file that says read me first teachers guide dot pdf. This is going to be your helpful hints and tips and help walk you through getting your system set up. As we begin looking at the teacher's guide, the first thing is the terms of use. This is a product that's only for one teacher, but if you would like to share and they want to buy from your Teachers Pay Teachers account, they can buy from you at a discount. Okay, all of your fonts are embedded into these documents, which means that they should pop up on their own, but that doesn't happen on a lot of computers. So the first thing you need to do is download the two fonts that aren't standard with most computers. Um, you can watch the video tutorial to learn a little bit more or to learn how to do that. The next thing we're going to talk about is the Mail Merge, which is just a function in Microsoft Word. It's fairly simple, but Mail Merge is what happens to make all of your forms autofill. It's very quickly. And then we're going to set up a macro to make the Mail Merge happen even faster. So if you'll notice, there are about 10 steps to creating a Mail Merge. What a macro does is takes all of those steps and turns it into its own button so that you can um, just press a button and all of those things happen. There is a video tutorial that you can watch that goes through every step and sets up those. Um, and we also will go through those a couple of times as we go through this tutorial. The next slide we're going to look at is the table of contents. This just shows all of the files that are in the folders that come in the classroom organization system. Number uh, one, class data is going to be probably the most important to get started, but then we're going to have a folder of, of documents in which the students' data will be automatically imported, and then we have some for the subject folder where we can create lesson plans and print calendars, and then we have another folder full of binder organization data, and that will help us to create our binders and to get organized. And then there's another folder that has a bunch of documents that don't require any kind of merge. You just um, edit them and print them. The first document we need to look at before we get started is the class data. It's an Excel spreadsheet, so let's go ahead and open it by going to our classroom management folder and clicking on class data. This spreadsheet has three different tabs, one for students, one for your lesson planner, and one for binder organization. It's just a simple Excel spreadsheet where you put in your students' name. Just go one piece of data to the next as much as you can put together. There is another form, if you go back to your classroom management, there's a parent information form that you can open and print and send to your students. And basically, this has all of the same questions as your data sheet. You would just send it home and then collect it back. Or at Open House or Meet the Teacher, you can have them fill it out right then and there before you even leave so you can have the school year started. In any case, you can always just start with their uh, first name and last name because that's what the majority of the documents use and then add the rest of the stuff later. So you would just, once you've collected those forms back, you just go through and put in as much information as you can. When it gets to, um, there's a section where it asks if the student has food allergies, medical concerns, or, or have special education, you would either put a Y for yes or an N for no. 
Um, you can also write some little notes and then your name and the teacher. It's very important that you fill out this data because this data is where all of the other documents pull from in order to create those documents automatically. The next tab is the Lesson Planner tab, and this just has one row of data for you to fill out. So basically what you're going to do, there is a lesson plan template. If you go back into your folder and open subjects data, you can see there are set up directions. There's either a one page template or a two page template. The one page template is good for three subjects and the two page goes up for seven subjects. Um, but they don't necessarily have to be spaces for subjects. You get to decide exactly what you want. So when you open the setup directions, you will see that some of these, um, all of these spaces have a number or some kind of little code. That, what you could do is print it up and then write kind of what you would want to be in these different areas. And then you would go back into the Excel spreadsheet and put what you would want. Uh, there are also area, arrows pointing to each section so you can see. So for example, um, M miscellaneous, basically in this section um, of your planner, what do you want it to say? Maybe you would want it to say uh, specials. There is a limit to 10 characters for most of these, but if you go over it, let's say you wrote specials and programs, it just won't let you do it it'll say you only have 10 characters. So think about how you could abbreviate that. Um, so then you would just go through and fill in each section um, by what you want it to say. Um, there's quite a few sections that you can fill out. There's some miscellaneous sections that aren't really a subject, but you can be creative as you do that. And your lesson planner, each section um, has three different categories. So for example, in um, section one, so I'm going to go over here where the one is, maybe I'm using that first section for my math planning, and then I have two smaller categories, so section 1A, maybe I want to put objectives, and section 1B, maybe I want to put homework page, and then you can type it. So it's important before you start to get your lesson planner data filled out, and the last section is binder organization. There are a bunch of tabs already here, um, a bunch of things that you might want uh, categories in your binders or your binder named or whatever. If you know it's not going to apply to you, then you can just delete it. So for example, I'm in Texas, so we teach with the TEKS, but if you're Common Core, you can just click on the number 42, right click and delete and take that out. You can also add anything you want to this list. So if you wanted to add Common Core and maybe you want to have a binder named Common Core, um, you can write in anything you want and you can have as many as you want. You don't have to use everything on this list. When we go to merge, you're just going to pick which ones you want to print. So don't worry about there being too many or that you might not use one. Just put it in there and you'll be good to go. Okay, let's go back to our table of contents and look at it a little bit more. Some of these files are highlighted in yellow. That just means they have an extra step more than the regular merge, and we'll look at that later too. But right now we're gonna focus on the student data folders and all of the files that are in it. We're gonna practice merging the data that we just filled out in that Excel spreadsheet into these documents, and also I'm gonna show you how to make a macro so that you can just do it in with one click. So if you look at this table of contents, each of these are hyperlinked to a little sheet that tells a little bit more about the file. So we're going to start with two, student information sheet. I'm going to click that so it would take me back to that page. Uh, if I click this giraffe, it'll take you back to here. So the student information sheet tells you everything and shows you a picture of, of the file. So this is what the student, um, the student data sheet will look like. This shows you the path, where to get there in your folders, the name of it. And then if it's merged, um, what data you do merge, so this one would get merged with students, and then if there's additional steps, how, uh, what you should print it, and we'll talk about that, and maybe what you should print it on, and then there's some a little tip available to you also. So you can always refer to this as you go to create documents. So the first thing we're going to do is create the student information form. So I'm going to go to my um, folder, I'm going to click on the student data, and I'm going to find the to student information sheet. 
Okay, and there it is. It just looks blank because it's not merged with any data yet. So I'm going to show you how to merge and then we're going to set up a macro to merge with our students. So how you merge is by clicking mailings, select recipients, use an existing list. Now we're going to go find that Excel spreadsheet. So we're going to click on, um, it's in my desktop in my classroom management folder and it's right here, one class data. I'm going to click open and then I have to tell it which of the tabs. Well, it needs to be merged with the students tab. So I'm going to click OK. And then when I click preview results, sometimes the formatting gets all off, but it's okay because when you pl click preview results, it'll get back to normal. And there we go. There's our form. And now when it's time to print, it did say that we needed to print all of it. And what that means is we are going to go to click finish and merge, print documents, and then we're going to click all. You will usually click all when you want to print a bunch of different documents with a bunch of different kids' names on them. For example, here you're going to have maybe 20 different pages and all 20 of them will have different kids' names. Usually you print current record when you're looking at the document and all of your students are on there and you just need to print one copy of that. Print dialog box pops up and you can print a certain number of copies or certain whatever and then click OK and it'll print. Now I'm going to show you how to create a macro. A macro is just a series of clicks that's saved as a single button so that when we go to do this again, we don't have to click all of those buttons that we just clicked. So what you're going to do is make sure you have the developer tab on your toolbar. How, if you don't have it, what you need to do is click File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and then make sure Developer is checked and then click OK. So the next thing you need to do is click on Developer, and we are going to record a macro. So click Record Macro, and then you can leave all this blank and just click Button. OK, and now here is the macro we're making. So select it and then click Add, and then we're going to modify it so it has a better name than New Macros Macro 1. We're going to name it Student Data Merge, and you can pick a different icon if you want to. And then you're going to click OK. Now that we, once we click OK again, the computer is going to start recording everything we click on. So in order to do the merge with the student data, I need to click Mailings, Select Recipients, Use an Existing List, I've got to go find that spreadsheet. So I'm going to open my desktop, class management file, and there it is. And I need to tell the computer that I want it to look at the students. Then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click Preview Results. Now that I'm done, I'm going to stop the recording by clicking Developer, Stop Recording. OK. When it did that, you can see that my macro went right here. And so next time I want to merge with my student data, all I have to do is click that butterfly. I don't have to go through any of those steps. So I'm going to exit out of here without saving so I can go back and show you. So I'm going to reopen the student information sheet. And now instead of going through that whole process, I'm just going to click the butterfly. And there it is. When I'm ready to print, I just click Finish and Merge print documents, and print them all. So now that we have a macro, make, the rest of the documents are going to be much easier. So let's go back to our table of contents. The next document is the student divider tabs. OK, so this is what the student divider tabs will look like. Um, you do need to merge them with your students. There's no additional steps. It does give you some different directions for printing. So it says be sure to click this button right here, the first record button, before printing current record. Um, it also tells you to print these on address labels and what size and so forth. So I'm going to go to my folder and I'm going to find student mailing address labels. Oops, sorry, student divider tabs. Open that. 
Okay, and there they are. Whenever I click the butterfly, it's going to automatically finish and merge. And when we go to print, I need to do what it said in the directions, and which was to click this button, make sure I'm on the first record, click finish and merge, and then print documents. And this time I'm only printing the current record. Click OK. And then you'll just put your labels in there. They're regular standard labels that you can get at Office Depot or Walmart. Then click OK. Once you're done printing these, you're going to take the labels off and then you can stick them on your student um, divider pages in order to, to make tabs. So back at the table of contents, we've done the first two. As you keep going down the list, these are all done the exact same way. So if I want to print mailing address labels, I'm going to merge it with my students, just like I did. I'm going to click that button before I print current record, and then I'm going to print it on the suggested paper. Uh, the next one is mailing address labels with just their first name. Same exact thing with both names, same thing. Um, little tiny ones. Um, these are postcards that you can individualize with the student's name. Same thing, except for maybe you should print them on cardstock so they're like cards. Um, a class roster. This is the same thing, a conduct quick check. In this quick check, you use these codes to make little notes of things that the students maybe have been doing. Uh, you can also edit these to say whatever you want. There's an email distribution list, which is really nice because you can highlight all of them and copy them and paste them straight into the subject of your email. So you can send everyone um, a mass email. Uh, this is a field trip form that you can keep and fill out. Um, a homework quick check. If you, there are little codes on it that you can circle and it says AY for absent yesterday, absent today, late, or excused. And that way you can keep little notes. Maybe they were absent yesterday and that's why they didn't have their homework today. Uh, this is a parent sign-in sheet that you would just set out at an open house and they sign next to their students' names. Um, let's see, reading level tracker. Student anecdotal records, these are created to hold a, a small post-it note that you can just get at Walmart or Office Depot. They're the one by eight eight. So that way you can have write little notes on post-its and then later go in and stick them where they go. Um, this is an assignment tracker and how I use this is I may sit this paper out where the students sign in their, um, turn in their work and they just check it off as they turn it in. So when I go to pick them up, I can see straight away who hasn't turned theirs in and write little notes like absent or late. And I can reuse the same paper for several different assignments. Uh, this is a growth tracker. You can edit this to say whatever you want. Maybe it's um, fat, uh, math levels or something. Uh, username and passwords. You can add a different program or for different websites so that you can keep track of that for your students how they get home from school, um, order forms. And now we're the, at the accommodations at a glance, which happens to be one of the highlighted ones from the table of contents, which means that there's an extra step for you to complete. So we're gonna do that one together. So first I'm gonna go in and open the um, accommodations at a glance. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and merge it regularly. Okay, so there are my students. And now I have to take the extra step to picking the students with accommodations. So what I'm going to do is click Edit Recipient List. Um, and we can uncheck them all or check them. And you can manually select your students that have accommodations. Or you can go in to Filter. And you're going to click for your field, Special Education, and then equal to Y. And that's why when we go in and fill out that data sheet at the beginning, I said to put Y for yes or N for no, so that we can say that, yes, this child has special education. And then you click OK. 
and then you click OK again. OK, and those are the ones that have special education. OK, when you're ready to print, you click Finish and Merge, Print Documents, and Print Current Record. And then you would click OK again. OK, and the next slide is for the birthdays chart. And this is another highlighted one, so this one has an additional step also. So let's go through that together. Let's open the birthdays chart. OK, and we're just going to click our macro to get all of the students in here. Now we're going to go to one more step to put them in order so that we can see their birthday months kind of together. So click on Edit Recipient List, and we are going to go to Sort. And then we're going to sort them by their birthday. And you can go from youngest to oldest or oldest to youngest. And then click OK. Um, I do have some extra people, some extra blanks in here. So I'm going to get rid of those and then click OK again. And now all of my students are on there in order. When I'm ready to print, I just click Finish and Merge, Print Documents, and print the current record. And then click OK again. OK, the next slide is a food allergies chart. And this is also one that requires one additional step. So we're going to do that one together as well. So open your food allergies list. And then let's merge it. OK, and then now we're going to edit the recipient list and just pick students that do have allergies. So click Filter. And we're in the field, we're going to click the uh, food allergies is equal to Y for yes. And then click OK. And then click OK. And then when you're ready to print, you click Finish and Merge, Print Documents, and print the current record. Click OK. And OK. And that is it. OK, as I go back, I see that the rest of my student um, data folder files are just regular where all you would have to do is print them and merge them. Now we're going to move on to the subject data folder files. Uh, we've already looked at the setup. Those are just to help you set up your lesson planner. Once you've had your Excel spreadsheet um, set up, then you can go to print your lesson planner. So what we're going to do is open, um, let's just first click to the lesson planner. Um, we are going to, we need to merge it with the lesson planner data this time and not the student data. So I'm going to open my um, subjects data folder and I'll do the one page uh, lesson planner. Okay, I cannot press this merge because it's going to pull data from my students instead of from my lesson planner. So I'm going to set up a new macro to do my lesson planner um, tab in my Excel spreadsheet. So to do that, remember, you click on Developer, and we're going to record a macro. OK, it's, we want it to have a button, so we're going to click Button. And then this is the macro. We're going to add it to our list and modify it so we can change its name. So we're going to do Lesson Planner Merge. And you can pick a different icon. And then click OK and then click OK. Once you click OK, anything else you click becomes part of the macro. So to merge it, we need to click Mailings, select Recipients, use an existing list. You need to go find that list. So I'm going to click on Desktop, Class Management, Class Data. And this time I need to pick the Lesson Planner tab and click OK. Preview Results. And now we're going to stop recording that macro. So go back to Developer and print stop recording. Okay, notice it, the button went up here and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna X this out without saving just so I can show you. I'm gonna open it right back up. And all I have to do is click my macro and it will fill in automatically. When I go to print, um, you can look back and see what it says. You need to print the press that and print the current record. So, I'm going to click Finish and Merge, Print Documents, and print the current record. If you want to have multiple copies, maybe you have a six weeks grading period, so you want to print six of them at a time, you just would change the number of copies here that you want to print. Also, this is a um, 
a lesson planner that you can type in or you can write in. If you want to write in it, of course, you would just print it. If you want to type in it, you can just um, type whatever you want to in there before you print it. All right, so I'm going to close this and open the two page. And it works the exact same way. You just now get to click your macro and it's automatically filled out with your information for you to type or handwrite. Okay, so if I go to the next, uh, that was the two page. The next one is the monthly calendar. Uh, this is just a regular document, so there's no merging. You just print it regularly and print the months you want to. The same thing with the quarterly calendar. The quarterly cal calendar is, um, sh is shown in this way, and the week, the school week, is boxed in with the Monday being um, recorded. Unless the box starts at a different day of the week, for example here, so you would know that would be a Tuesday. And the teacher's book labels are merged, but you would do them the exact same way. All right, so now let's go back to our table of contents. And now let's look at the binder organization data. All of these are highlighted, which means they need an extra step, but the extra step is very simple. Let's start by clicking the, the binder divider pages. Okay, the binder divider pages look like this, and they have a place for you to put the tabs. Um, you are going to merge it with the binder or organization data, and then we do have an additional step here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open uh, my binder divider pages. Okay, I've already gone through and did my macro, so you can do that. And when you're ready to merge, this one is going to merge with my binder. So I'm going to click that. And now for the extra step, you do need to click Edit Recipient List and then choose what you want as divider pages in your binders. How do you want to, how do you want to make your sections in your binder? This unchecks them all, this checks them all, and you just go through and check which ones. Once you have all of the ones that you would like, a binder divider, just click OK and then you'll have that those records. You can look through them using these arrows. When you're ready to print, you always want to make sure you're back at the first record. Click Finish and Merge, Print Documents, and this time you're going to print all of them since you have a bunch of different documents that you're going to print. And then click OK, and then click OK. So your extra step is super easy. Let's do one more. So this time I'm going to open the Binder Divider tabs. This message just means that this data is already merged. I probably went into practice and forgot to unmerge it. So if you see this pop up, you can just click no. Okay, so here are the um, labels. I can press that to merge the data. And when I'm ready to print, I first need to decide what I want to print. These labels, you can just print all of your categories that you had in the tabs, or you can go through and just pick the same ones that you made the binder divider pages for. Click OK and you're ready. Make sure you always click this button. Click Finish and Merge. Print your documents and print the current record. Okay. We'll look at one of the binder spines, but they all pretty much work the same way. They're just different sizes. So you open a binder spine. You can merge them. Okay, and then you need to edit recipient list so you can decide what your binders are going to be. And then click OK. Always click back to the very first one before you print. That was an example of uh, why you must do that. When you're on different records, sometimes it deletes some of the first one. So always go back and click finish and print and then print documents and then print the current record. And these will print out, and you can just cut them out and put them in your binder spine. Okay, so um, as we go down, we have several different sizes of binder spines, um, and then we have cover pages. And all of these work the same way. It's just a regular merge, but then you go back and pick your pick the the records that you would like to print. The uh, last section we have is the printables with no merge, and those are just 
um, little charts or posters or papers or forms that you can edit and print to match yours. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do. The last thing I want to talk about is um, how these files are editable. So I'm just going to open a file. Um, and merge them. And there are a couple different ways you can edit it. You could just edit it just right here, or you can click Finish and Merge and edit individual documents. And then you can either edit just the current record you're looking at on the screen, or you can have them all. And what's going to happen, let's just click Current Record. Right now it's named Three Student Name Labels, but when you click OK, it's going to open it into a, a brand new document called Letters One, and then you can um, reformat it or edit it in some kind of way. So for example, let me um, do parent sign-in sheet. My data I'm merging has 25 and this program is set up for 25, but let's say you only have um, less than that and you end up with some blanks. You can always delete those just by um, selecting them and pressing Control X to delete them if you want your forms not to have blanks. But that's another good good thing about this is that you can edit it. It edit it. It does become a little bit trickier if you want to add more students. Let's say you have uh, 26 students. Um, you you can't really do it without doing a whole lot of reformatting. So this program does limit you to 25 students. But if you have a switch class and you have 25 in each, you can just set up the program twice and have two Excel spreadsheets and then you could merge it to, you could actually set up two different macros and you could have one merge to your homeroom and you could have another macro that would merge to your switch class so you could print them separately like that. Again, before you get started on yours, I do want to invite you to subscribe to my newsletter and um, when I send out those newsletters, I will send out an extra file that you can add to your um, to your folder, and which means more easy printables for you. If you have any questions, you can always email me at cassienowak at gmail.com or visit my blog at cassienowakteach.blogspot.com, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much, and good luck.